So in today's video, I'm going to demo a lighting setup that I use very often, but is actually not considered by a lot of beginner photographers. Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so so that you get a chance to win one of the giveaways that I'm giving out now, which is the MagMod Starter Kit. So I'm going to give the mechanics somewhere in, towards in the end of the video, but please do subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell while you're at it. Now, if you want to see some of my images, you can also find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So what do I have in store for you guys today? Basically, it's another one light setup, but this time the light positioning will be very, very different. It's not something that's normally considered by a lot of beginner photographers first but I love using it a lot. So before we get into that, let's talk about the backdrop that I'll be using today. This is another one from Kate Backdrop. It's another hand-painted backdrop, 5 foot by 7 foot on a neutral tone. You, you guys are going to see later why I love these backdrops so much. So what flash will I be using? I'm using the Sony F60RM and it's going to be triggered by my Sony Wireless Commander, the WRC1M. I'll go through my camera settings later on in the video. So my flash is connected to the MagMod MagGrip. Now this MagGrip will be the one to hold the flash in place when I position it this way. The position of the flash will be somewhere here, but instead of it hitting the hitting the subject directly from this, from, from this angle, I will do this. I will have the light directly above the subject. Now, you guys are gonna say, oh, what about all the shadows that will be underneath the face? And that's a question that we're gonna be answering now. So let's start shooting. So the camera that I am using now is my Sony A7R Mark IV with a 24 to 70 2.8 GM lens. Now I have here, as usual, if you guys are familiar with the video, my Hollyland Mars 400S. This transmits a signal on my phone that where I am recording. So everything that you guys are seeing now is basically what my camera is seeing. So it's a live view of what I am seeing. Now, what settings do I have in, set in my camera? I have it on manual mode, 1 over 250 f2.8 ISO 100. So how does it really look like now in terms of exposure? This is how it looks like. It's completely blank, so it's completely dark. So basically what we are, so what you guys are going to be seeing is just coming from my flash there. Okay, so let me turn on my flash now. So what's my flash power? My flash is set on group A. My high speed sync is turned off and it is set at 1 16th power. Okay, so we have again my wife Coco who will be our subject for today. My beautiful model, of course, all the time. Now, let's start off with the setup of how it was earlier. Let's take one test shot. As you can see, we are actually getting more light in the backdrop rather than on her face. And that is the problem with overhead lighting set this way. It's a very easy fix. All you have to do is move the light a little bit further away from the background and it's gonna be hitting more of her face. So let's take one more test shot without changing any settings. Such a big difference already in terms of the illumination in the face. But I think we are underexposed, so what we can do now is make the flash a bit stronger and maybe put it at 1 8 There, that's a lot better. Now, they we're still getting a bit of shadow on her face, so how do we remove that? That is where posing comes in. You guys always have to understand that the model should always be facing towards their source of illumination. If their source of illumination is, let's say, on the floor, then the model should look for her light and look towards the floor. But if we are dealing with non-models, maybe like, for example, Coco already knows what to do. But most of the subjects that you might end up shooting are not really familiar with those principles. You have to be able to direct them. So let's pretend Coco doesn't know what she's doing and say, this is your light. So make sure that you're facing towards the light all the time. So that's the most essential thing that you have to tell them with a light setup like this. So now maybe you could move your body this way. I won't make her look towards the light yet. Because right now, if I move her body this way, she is getting more 
uh, more light on her face. Let's take one more shot. Beautiful. Look at that. But then now we need to be able to get emotion. Now that we've dialed it in, let's get a little bit of emotion and tweak the pose a little bit more. Okay. So lean forward a bit, babe, please. Good. There we go. Chin up a bit. More pensive. Tilt your head away from camera. Perfect. That's it. Oh, I love that. I really love that. So again, you always have to match your pose to your to the light. In other words, if you have your light set up this way, you know very well that you will actually do some dramatic poses. How about removing your hair from, from your shoulder and then putting your hand somewhere in your collarbone, your right hand only. Your right hand, maybe towards the left a bit more. How about we, okay, that's perfect. Then your other hand, put it there. Perfect. And this time, here's a clincher. She needs to look up. Can you look up, please? And show me your jawline a bit more. Yes. Tilt your head towards me. Very nice. No, sorry, away, away. Then chin towards me. There, good. Looking up here. Beautiful. Now with that one, how about you close your eyes? More emotion. So beautiful. So this is what we're going to do. When we get into that pose, when I, when I count to three, one, two, three, on the third, breathe in. Okay? All right. So can we get into that pose first? Tilt your head away. There. Close your eyes. On the count. One, two, three. Breathe in. So with that one, you notice it brings her entire body up. So you get that feeling already, that, that emotion that they're going to try to get. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you've got shadows in the eye, it's, it's a bad thing. But it really depends on the type of mood and portrait that you're trying to create. Now, I would actually go, babe, can you face me? And then lean towards me this way. And put your, put your hand on your chin. Okay. Nice. There we go. Look at that. It now becomes a bit more powerful. One more, please. But maybe your finger on the, there. Not too much. There. That's it. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. And final two shots. I'm going to do something. I'm going to move the light a little bit more here since she leaned forward. Beautiful. And final shot. I love it. So don't you just love the output of this light setup? It gives you nice dramatic images. And it, since it's not used that often, it's not very common. Now, this one extend also be a supplementary light, meaning it could be your hair light. If you want it to be less dramatic, you could just add a light here or in the back to bring up, to open up the shadows in that subject's face. But the most important thing to remember whenever you're shooting with overhead light like this is that you talk to your subject. You always tell them, look for their light. In other words, they have to be facing towards a general direction on where the light is coming from in order for it to be pleasing to the eye. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget that I am giving away a MagMod starter kit and the winner will be drawn on Feb 15, 2021. Now to join is very easy. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell. Follow me on Instagram at Jiggy Alejandrino and like the Facebook page of MagMod Philippines. But don't worry, I'll put everything in the description below. So again, before we end this video, I want to say thank you to my wife, Coco. Thanks, babe, for being such a wonderful subject today. And again, to Mela Jimenez, thank you very much for virtually assisting Coco do her makeup for today's shoot. If you guys want to know more about Mela, I'm going to put her details in the description below also. Okay, so till the next video.